Welcome back. An attempt to escape a hit and run ends tragically. Chief Superintendent Craig Stubbs telling reporters on the scene that the incident occurred just before one this afternoon at the intersection of Winders Terrace and Malcolm Road. Four vehicles involved in this traffic mishap this afternoon where we have the initial report. Female driver exiting Winders Terrace collided with a Ford van that was traveling west on Malcolm Road. That driver continued traveling west, exiting onto East Street, colliding with the Honda vehicle. Thus, once the impact was being initiated with the Honda vehicle, the Honda vehicle then collided with a truck that was traveling north on East Street. Uh, EMS came to the scene and they announced the male driver of the Honda. He had expired. The female driver of the Nissan vehicle was transported to PMH where she's undergoing uh, further medical treatment. Meantime, the truck driver complained of leg injuries. From the courts this evening, the prosecution in the high-profile Frank Smith extortion trial has shaken up its legal team. A London-based Queen's counsel has been added. Attorney Edward Jenkins will now lead that team as it pushes ahead with its case against the former Public Hospital Authority chairman. The top attorney is said to be a lawyer's lawyer as his knowledge of all laws, regulatory, consumer and fraud is second to none. Smith's case resumes following a six-week break in the matter after the virtual complainant Barbara Hanna fell ill late last year. This afternoon, the prosecution asked that its submissions be made in a private hearing. But defense attorney Keith Knight, QC, opposed, arguing that he saw no reason that the matters be presented not be made in public. Chief Magistrate Joanne Ferguson Pratt advised, though, that the information may be beneficial to the defense's case. The case was then adjourned for an hour for the prosecution to disclose the said information to the defense. After reconvening, the prosecution noted that the defense required some time to review the evidence given and asked that the trial be adjourned until Wednesday. Chief Magistrate Pratt agreed. Smith stands accused of 13 counts of extortion, one count of attempted extortion and one count of bribery. He's pleaded not guilty to all the charges. Freedom short-lived for the alleged culprits behind three recent killings here in the Capitol. Charged with two counts of murder and one count of attempted murder was 18-year-old Deontay Pinder. Pinder is alleged to have killed both Rashad Bethel and Desorn Simonet on February 16th in Pinewood Gardens. It's alleged that on that same date, he attempted to kill Roland Brown as well. Pinder was not required to enter a plea and was remanded to the Bahamas Department of Corrections until April 18th. 25-year-old Stephen Voltaire has also been locked up until that date. The particulars are that on February 15th, Voltaire unlawfully caused the death of Matthew Mortimer. He too was not required to enter a plea in the matter. The prosecution is expected to proceed with the case via a voluntary bill of indictment. Both men appeared before Chief Magistrate Joy Ann Ferguson Pratt. Both were represented by noted attorney Muir DeSeal. A 25-year-old Surmanese man to spend the next few years in a Bahamian jail after being caught with drugs. Our Amajal Knowles has the details of that story. Warren Panaway appeared before Deputy Chief Magistrate Zabusula Swain on Monday to answer one count each of possession of dangerous drugs with intent to supply, conspiracy to possess dangerous drugs, and importation of dangerous drugs. The particulars are that the defendant had just come in from a flight from Suriname on February 20th when officers told him he was to be searched. Initially, police found $900 they believed to have been derived from illicit activity, but no narcotics. Upon further questioning, officers noticed that the defendant was acting suspicious. He was then taken to Princess Margaret Hospital, where he was given a thorough examination. When doctors noticed several foreign objects in the defendant's stomach, several hours later, Panaway excreted 67 black plastic wraps filled with cocaine. When questioned, he told officers he was given the one pound of drugs by a Leroy Johnson, was promised $3,000 upon arrival. Representing Panaway was attorney Dion Smith, who said his client had made a silly mistake and was from a poor background, did not seek to make a profit, but only provide for his family. Mr. Smith added that the judge take into consideration that he did not seek to waste the court's time and did not have any prior convictions. Panaway, through his interpreter, pled guilty to all the charges, but Magistrate Swain said she could not ignore that it was a Class A drug and it was impossible to not give out a custodial sentence, thereby sentencing Panaway to 72 months in prison to run concurrently. Panaway will be deported following his sentence. 
For JCN News, I'm Amajal Knowles. Meantime, an alleged killer is on the loose and police are pretty confident that with your help they can make an arrest. Wanted is 18-year-old Romero Roll. An All Points Bulletin puts the Palm Beach Street resident at between 5 feet 6 and 5 feet 8 inches tall, dark-skinned and slim build. Police also on the hunt for the suspect behind an early morning shooting that's left a woman wounded. Our news team understands a group of females were driving along Quintine Alley off Wolf Road just before 2 a.m. when the driver of a red Kia Jeep overtook them. That's when a passenger armed with a firearm reportedly leaned out the vehicle and opened fire in the direction of the women's vehicle, injuring one of them. At last report, she was in stable condition in hospital. You're watching JCN News. There's more to come when we return. This segment of the news was brought to you by Alive.